Oh, hey guys. Welcome to the principle of color as it relates to visual effects. This is number four in the series of five. And admittedly, color is probably the one that I struggle the most with personally. I am not necessarily naturally good with color. Um, I've had to really study a lot about it and learn a lot from my peers to get a good grasp on it. But hopefully I can convey some of those lessons that I've learned to you guys. So color is an uh, interesting thing because you have such wide uses for it, right? And really what I want to talk the most about in this video is how color can define sorts of schools of magic, and it can also define within those schools of, ma schools of magic or within those elements um, how the energy behaves, if that makes sense. So for example, uh, take yellow. So yellow here on these ones on the left, you know, it's like fey or light, right? It's this nice, like, bright, friendly, glowy color, but then put it at the center of a saturated red, and it becomes this infernal, intense heat. Uh, and you can see yellow being used, uh, actually, in uh, quite a few of these. And every color is the same, that depending on the context that you put it in, it completely changes what it's communicating and the vibe that it's putting off. And with effects, this is very elusive because we can even change color over lifetime. And we also typically have a lot of colors layered on top of each other that are blending together. So it's a challenge to wrangle those. I'm not going to talk about the specifics of how I do that in the tools, but I'm just going to explain some of the sort of principle of color to help you guys make good judgment calls as you're down in the tool. So looking at all these different icons uh, from Elementalist Lux, we can start to see uh, some overlap. And this is because I, I took out the color depth in these. You'll notice that each one of these only has one hue, right? There's only one color, one RGB value per uh, element, and then it's just ranging in brightness and intensity, right? So what we get is things like light and air have a lot of overlap, where they kind of feel like distinct elements a bit, but realistically when you start putting that into practice in-game, and you have those side by side, they're going to look really similar, right? Because it's only a little bit of blue in the air, and even then it's very desaturated, which comes close to just the more grayscale of the light. Uh, even more extreme is the example of water and ice. Now, sometimes you might say, well, the shape is going to make them different. Um, that might be true, but in the case of Elementalist Lux, it's the same abilities for all of these. And so, uh, literally, like, the shapes and the AoEs and the missiles are going to be very, very similar shape-wise. So, we're going to have to have some color depth to distinguish them. So, we see the versions that um, actually shipped, and you can already tell immediately Oh my gosh, yes, the color depth is there, like the School of Magic is, is so much more distinct. And, I mean, it's funny because this is this is the kind of thing where when you first create an effect, you might think, oh, this looks great. You know, it's got some nice dynamic shape to it. It might even be moving nicely, might be timed nicely. But adding that color depth gives it that nice, magical, polished feeling. And this may not be the game you're working on. Admittedly, some games decidedly go for... Um, monochromatic schools of magic or elements, whatever that is, like healing is just green and it's just one solid green, or fire is just this red, and, and that does make it very clear if you have fewer elements that you're working with, but in the case of League of Legends, there's like hundreds and hundreds of skins, right, and they all have this unique color identity, and the only way we can have them all distinguished is by having color depth, and when I say color depth, I mean basically more than just one hue, right? So taking a look at these, you can see that uh, you know fire and magma are distinguished because most of the colors are pretty similar, actually. But then here at the end, we have more of the pinks versus you know more of just like the dark, dark reds. And thanks, by the way, to Hadija Chamberlain for helping to prepare these. Um, this was a, a great idea that she had when we were collaborating on a talk together. So um, my hat's off to her for getting this together. All right, so fire reads is hot, and um, you know, adding in more of the pinkish stuff feels a little more menacing, right? 
So air and ice. Um, here's a great example how, you know, air is basically all the same hues as ice, but just more desaturated. So you've got hue, which you can adjust, which is like, you know, red, blue, purple, whatever, right? But then you've also got saturation. And then finally value. And value we gave its own lesson. So in this video we're talking about saturation and hue, but not as much value, although I will touch on it a little bit. So holy and mystic, this is another um, example of saturation where you know, this feels more like serious and like um, intense. It feels more holy, obviously. And then this one by being more saturated just feels more playful and magical and that kind of thing. Okay, so moving on to um, the awesome style guide that uh, my good friend Jin Yang put together. I'm going to see what is recorded in the league rulebook for artists on what we follow for color. All right, so uh, you remember a graph very similar to this in the value section, right? Where it was VFX value range over here and then the value range of UI characters and environment, right? Well, oddly enough, this follows pretty much the same uh, ranges, but this time for saturation. And so what that means is we can have visual effects that are both really, really desaturated, really gray down here, or then just really, really colorful up here. But then we don't want to go full blown out. And that's when you're typing in like, you know, 255 red or 255 of anything that's going to fully saturate it when you're uh, color picking. Okay, so what does that get us? Um, it gets us these nice different schools of magic. And again, this is uh, the way League of Legends operates, and even the previous slide as well. You may have a different rule book for your game, and it's totally legit. Um, the same goes for all these tutorials. By the way, I know sometimes I've been talking definitively about how to think about things. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments about hey, on our game, we actually have a different approach. Here's how we think of it. I'd love to get a conversation going on that. So anyway, we've got different schools of magic, and you can see the effects. Uh, they mimic the colors of the characters, and that way it marries to the character. It makes it believable that that character shot off that ability, and it's important to have that color harmony between the two. Now, um, complementary uh, colors. So this is interesting, because the temptation is to make something pop off of the screen by uh, placing it next to its complementary. And, you know, red and green, purple and yellow, and blue and orange are the classic complementaries, right? Well, that's great, except you need to remember that one of the two needs to be more desaturated or, like, more transparent or, like, less of it or all of the above. Because if you don't, you'll notice if you stare at any one of these for a while, it starts to like vibrate. It's like assaulting the eyes, you know? It's just like, uh, like there, there's this kind of visual dissonance on I don't know which one's more important for me to look at. They're both commanding my attention and they're really fighting with each other really badly. So as you're working on effects, be aware of placing two highly saturated colors. Even if they're not totally complementary, sometimes they're near complementary, but if they're both highly, highly saturated and they're right next to each other, Oh, it's going to be a, a tricky time getting them to read. Um, you've got the example here on Lulu's shield where she's got, you know, really, really saturated colors just all together. And um, also it's struggling with uh, value control. The values are really contrasty as well. But then the saturation is contrasty. Usually the two happen hand in hand because crank up the value all the way, crank up the saturation all the way, throw it in. Um, it's typically, typically how it goes. Whereas on Bard, you'll notice that the yellows up here are very dominant, very saturated, and the purples back here are transparent, desaturated, and there's less of it. So that makes it read as a nice secondary touch, but it does have the effect of making the yellow feel more yellow, right? That's the advantage of putting uh, saturated colors, or sorry, complementary colors next to each other. Uh, more examples of common palettes that we like to use. Uh, you know, it's interesting, you know, like I said, differentiating things in League is a real challenge, and honestly, we don't do the perfect job all the time. We don't claim to follow our own rules perfectly, and I'm sure some of you will call me out on this um, if I don't give that caveat. Um, but yeah, like generally, you know, you want to distinguish a heal from a poison, and it's not easy to do. They both have green in them, and then you just add these touches of other things in them to sell the difference, right? 
And how you do this exactly in game by game, it may not be these exact palettes, it's totally fine. Uh, moving on, you know, you've got Frost and Arcane. Again, very similar, but then Arcane has definitely uh, indexes higher more on the purples. And uh, also, of course, the shapes make a big difference as well here, but the color is going to be um, a big distinguisher on the type of magic it is. Uh, Gunpowder over here, pretty straightforward, understandable. Um, this is worth mentioning as well. Uh, fire is a, a really good case study of how energy burns, and I'm going to go into this a little more in a few slides later with other types of energy. Um, fire, you'll notice if you observe fire, it burns more of these like hot yellows close to white in the core where it's warmest, and then as it burns outward, you know, it moves into like more of the uh, orangish and then the reds, and then it has the smoky browns on the outer. And uh, so keep that in mind. If you want to represent fire um, burning the way that it does more realistically, then you'll want to have the hotter yellowish whites in the core, and then more of the reddish oranges and, and then browns towards the outer edge where the air is, is cooler and the energy is quickly um, cooling off as it expands. On the other hand, you can always invert it for interesting effects too. So. Just knowing the rule and being aware of how it works in real life is, is helpful. All right, so more examples. You got Celestial, Shadow Isles, e, Nature, etc. I'll let you guys browse through these on your own time sometime. Moving right along. All right, indicators. So this is a, a fun one because, uh, you know, at first glance, you might think, oh, yeah, blue and red. And while, yes, this one is primarily blue and this one is primarily red, You'll notice in these, uh, both in the bar down here and in the rings up top, that there's a variation of hue. And the, the saturation doesn't really vary, and the, the value doesn't really vary, right? So I guess over here the value lightens up a little, um, but not by much. The, the, the thought is here that there's just this subtle transition of hues. And by adding that in, that little bit of flavor, it makes it feel nice and magical, nice and just like... Like there's something to it that's hard to put your finger on um, unless you were the one making it and then you know what the secret sauce is. So just try that out. Where When you're making something pure red, just shift it a little bit to pink, a little bit to orange with red in the middle, um, and just see how that feels when you vary that up a little. All right. So we got Super Galaxy Shibana here. And uh, she's shooting off an ability. And here it is, paused. So... Basically, what we have here, you know I mentioned how fire burns, right? Well, um, you can play around with how energy burns, especially made up space energy, right? Here we've got it burning kind of like a pale pink at the core with like yellows, yellows and oranges out at the tip for some reason. I don't know why. It just looks kind of cool. And then it burns off to a very saturated pink, but then also to a nice blues and purples and it's accented by these interesting greens. Now, the hierarchy is, is really nice here, right? Because the most saturated parts are in the glowiness, in, in the sorts of fringes. And you'll notice the glow out here around, even though it's darker, the value is darker, um, the saturation is much higher than it is in the core, right? And uh, this is a lot like, you know, you've seen those uh, glowy space swords that are, like, white in the core, and they have... Um, like color around the edge, you know? You know what I'm talking about. So the, the glowiness, the color around the edge is where the energy is like, you know, cooling off, right? But then the hot core is like a, it's like it simulates a camera effect where the camera can't adjust to take in all the detail of the hot core and super dark parts. And there's such a bright light source there that it just gets blown out in the camera, right? But then as the energy, uh, fades off around the outsides, um, you start to see what the color of that energy is. hope that makes sense. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Yorick. So for this example, I went ahead and I stripped out all hue and saturation variation. Well, mostly just hue variation. So, looks okay, kind of all right. Also, maybe a little bit like poison, you know, it's kind of funny because um, as I was doing this example, I realized uh, in World of Warcraft, you know, the, the Legion magic, the undead magic, actually 
well, this actually fits that pretty well because it's like pretty much green like it is the green magic in the game and it's undead and it works great so for us uh, we have uh, in, in League of Legends we have Shadow Isles magic and Shadow Isles magic Mork follows the palette of Yorick right here that you see like in his cape and you know the mottled uh, like bruised colors like the cyans and stuff like that with green as well um, so basically this is the one note version right um, now what's funny about this version and this is like you know you can see <laughs> you can see all the hues I used um, it actually doesn't feel too terrible. But this is the funny thing about hues, is if you're not careful, um, your values will confuse you and make you think that everything is fine, that everything is working, that you've got good hierarchy going. And the values, meaning the lights and the darks, can actually bury the hues underneath them. So that's why I put the uh, fade out here at the top. Because if you read across the top here, there's actually not a big difference between all of them. But trust me, underneath, I went ahead and saturated everything like crazy, which gives it this sort of dissonance. It's not quite right. And so just be aware of what's going on with the colors underneath the values that you've got laid down. Of course, do your values first and get good, um, good, get good grayscale going. But when you start layering on color, um, try to avoid doing high saturation uh, colors right next to each other, like I did here. All right, so here's the version that we have in the game, and uh, here they all are together. So, yeah, so basically, you know, you can see we've got, you know, the highlight here, it's like really cyan, and then you've got the mottled greens and blues, and uh, they're kind of chilling out. They're slightly more saturated, especially the blues, slightly more saturated around the, uh, the outer edges, um, but it's really dark, and so it's dark and saturated, which still gives us what we need. You don't always have to have your saturated colors seen with high values. Um, sometimes you can mix and match. So yeah, there's the York example. Next up we have, <coughs> sorry, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. Um, we have Thresh, sorry, I, I was spacing, Dark Star Thresh, and uh, Guardian of the Sands, Zareth. And we're going to talk a little bit about them in isolation and how their two energy types were used by two different artists to convey cohesive abilities so that all their abilities that they fire feel like they're united with each other and uh, not just um, randomly tacked on. Cool. So first up, we've got Threshster. So here we've got Thresh with his three of his abilities. He's got his attack his hook and his lantern. And um, if we open these up, you can see that the hit impact here. Now, what's fun about this is that each of these abilities are all pulling from the same palette, but they're pulling different amounts of color from that same palette, right? Like here, we definitely have way more yellow than we see in the other ones. Um, in fact, this one, well, this one has yellow on the missile that flies out, but that's, that's about it. You know, this one just has little touches of yellow here in the trail. Um, has like yellow in the uh, glow of the hook itself that's just always there so that it's clear when he's twirling that around and ready to fire. It's very clear con contrast there. Um, and yeah, the artist was able to play around within this palette of colors to create really dynamic and diverse uh, range of um, color and energy and all that stuff while still keeping it cohesive within the same character. This was uh, Adam Kupratis. He did an awesome job on this. He's another one of my mentors on the league team. Really, really talented guy. Right, so then we have another uh, Brian Thompson original. He did uh, these awesome abilities, and as you can see, there's a lot to take in, so we'll do two at a time. Um, we've got the basic attack up at the top, and then we've got his awesome cue down at the bottom. This has kind of put me on the spot. i got to remember which abilities are all for which characters, because I don't play all the characters. All right, something that you'll notice about, um, well, I mean, obviously the basic attack. We'll just start there. It's pretty basic, right? You've got more saturated yellow here, and then you've got more pale yellows here that also shift a little bit more towards red, meaning 
they're just slightly more orange, just barely, and then they're desaturated as well. And uh, always remember the different axes that you can move it on. You don't have to move it, you know, with hue and saturation and value all at once. You can do those independent to kind of get different variety. Down here, he really wanted this one to feel much more impactful, right? So what we have is we have the near white at the core. Remember we talked about going close to white, but not quite all the way. The near white at the core. And then the yellow, which is pretty saturated, pretty saturated yellow, maybe not all the way, because we can see that the orange around it is fully saturated. It's like super saturated orange, but because it's darkened, it doesn't like scream off of the screen. It still supports uh, the core right here. It makes that the primary read. And uh, this nice dark saturated halo kicks in. And then down here, you know, we have the nice su subtle sand that we saw up on the basic attack. All right, so we got a couple more abilities from Zareth. Um, I mean, this is one of those missiles that you definitely don't want to hit you. We mentioned those uh, in the other one before about value, in the other video about value. And uh, you can see that it has nice contrast, of course. It's got a you know, dark halo around it with a really nice bright core. Um, but then also the saturation rules and the hue rules of the energy are consistent, both here and over here, where you've got you know, that near white core to the yellow, to the orange, and then, you know, the sandy brown around the outside. Just creates a nice vibe overall. So, um, for those of you who are new to the series, I've been talking a lot about this uh, forum that's out there. It's realtimevfx.com. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, go ahead and check it out. If you're interested in learning about effects or meeting other effects artists or sharing knowledge of your own, this is a fantastic place to go and do all of the above. Also, the job board, which I own and operate, uh, it's attached to the forum. You can just click jobs at the top to navigate to it. And uh, we try to provide some, uh, some good services. We don't try to provide good services. We do provide good services to uh, anyone who's out there trying to look for a job or anyone who's trying to look for a real-time visual effects artist. Uh, I realize as a real-time VFX artist myself that we are hard to come by. It's hard to hire for that position. Um, so, you know, head on over to the job board and uh, check it out. And as always, if you want to look me up, the best place to reach me is on Real Time VFX on the forum. I'm at Kaiserito, or you can go to kaiserhouse.com and check out my other content. I've got Pinterest board, Twitter, DeviantArt, all the good stuff. So, there you have it. There's the unit on color, and I hope you guys all learned something and keep on making awesome. <laughs>